Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast with Scott McKenzie. Scott is a passionate industry professional dedicated to transferring cutting-edge, industry-focused innovations and trends while highlighting the men and women who keep the world moving. So put on your hard hat, grab your work boots, and let's go. All right, once again, thank you very much for joining Industrial Talk, and thank you so much for your support. We, as you can tell, there's chirpy chirpy going in the background. We are broadcasting on-site. Fabtech is the location. It is in Atlanta, Georgia, and I got to tell you, it is exciting. There's a lot of people roaming around, and once again, you know that this platform is dedicated to you, industry professionals all around the world, because you are bold. You are brave, you dare greatly, and you're making the world a better place. That's why this platform celebrates you each and every day. All right, in the hot seat, we have two. A twofer. (laughs) Nathaniel and Eduardo are in the house, and we're going to be talking a little bit about whatever they want to talk about, but primarily economic development. Let's get cracking. You don't have to talk about that if you don't want. No, but I, I think it's important. We, we would love to talk about economic development. Yeah, let's, make it, <laughs> let's make it happen. Yep. Before we get into that conversation, let's level set for the listeners out there. Uh, Nathaniel, give us a little background of what makes you so passionate about what you do. How, you, how did you become a, you know, this professional? And you're next, FYI. Right. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Um, and so my background was engineering. Um, I actually graduated. I was born and raised in North Carolina. I currently work in economic development in North Carolina. Um, after I graduated from university, I went abroad. Um, sort of, what university? Uh, NC State, of course. Engineering. Oh, how ridiculous. <laughs> currently the third largest engineering school in the U.S., just to add that token. There's a plug. There you go. There you go. The, uh, also the number 17 football team. I'll, I'll stop there. Yeah, but, no, I was just going to say, sorry. <laughs> start talking football too. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> um, I, I went abroad for a while uh, doing uh, wastewater treatment, um, a variety of different, we'll say, surrounding industries, um, helped set up uh, companies and projects overseas. Um, really, really enjoyed that and realized there's another aspect of making projects that set up process a whole lot easier. So when I came back to North Carolina, um, fortunately, North Carolina operates the economic development in a partnership. So one of 17 states that uses a partnership instead of a using the only, the, we'll say, the Department of Commerce office or the governor's office. Um, we're actually a public-private partnership. So it gives a little bit more flexibility and the able, ability to actually travel, meet with the companies personally and say, hey, listen, this is how we can integrate your company into a particular region. Um, this is what makes sense for your company. So it really attracted me to the area or to this industry per se, um, and I've been enjoying it ever since. Um, obviously with the kind of development, you work with all sort of industries. Um, being here at Fabtech is great. This is one of my passions, um, but really is the, that general being able to continue to learn and then also assist companies as I once was on the other side of the spectrum and really experience that from this side. It's a hard act to follow. I'm sorry, Eduardo. No, no, I, <laughs> not at all. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm learning as I go. It's <laughs> no, it's all good. Give us a little background. Yes, so um, I'm originally from Costa Rica, but I moved to the U.S. uh, 10 years ago, actually to the Charlotte region uh, for my MBA. And I started working with a small business development center, helping uh, entrepreneurs in their community, just helping them grow and really in the whole region. um, And I did that for around eight years, which was really rewarding. And up to this day, sometimes I drive down the road and say, oh, I helped that business. Um, And then uh, after that, I worked for uh, a technical college, a community college, as a uh, program manager for business and professional development in workforce and economic development. We're helping with customized training, all everything from real estate to leadership, uh, you name it, you know, I, I manage those programs. Uh, before joining the Charlotte Regional Business Alliance, uh, which now I'm in business recruitment, which for the re- uh, for the Charlotte region, which includes you know ten states in North Carolina and four in South Carolina. Ten counties. Ten counties. Yeah. yeah. But ten you guys counties. collaborate. You guys work together. Yes. So. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. A, a couple of questions. One. Explain partnership. What does that mean? You, you say, hey, we're we're. This is sort of a. a economic development arm, but we, we are in sort of that partnership mode. What, what does that mean that's different from others? Yeah, of, of course. Um, well, I mean, there's no real, um, we'll say, perfect way to do economic development. Um, a lot of states do it through the Department of Commerce, and and that's great, and they have a lot of success doing with that. Um, a lot of times with government, there tends to be an addition of red tape, um, tends to maybe some bureaucracy. Um, there also tends to be the 
uh, very difficult to adapt to certain situations, albeit turnover, setting KPI, um, even smaller instances, um, being a state employee, if you have a prospect that comes into town, you take him to view a couple sites, you want to buy him some alcohol, you can't do that. Yeah. And so your, your, your hands are tied in certain areas. It so doesn't quite have that flexibility. Um, being a public-private partnership means you get that additional flexibility. You can be a little bit more um, adapting to the environment. Um, you can see how the industry changes and adapt to that, adapt your workforce, um, adapt how you target a market. And of course, even the smaller things, per, uh, perhaps like employee turnover, um, setting higher KPIs, uh, purchasing alcohol if need be, um, would, are much more accessible. Um, so currently, several states are, we'll say, using this model as opposed to the traditional um, only through the Department of Commerce and the Governor's Office model of doing economic development. Um, North Carolina has had some success doing this. So we're ranked number one by CBC for the number one state to do business um, this past year. Um, so. Building off that success, I would say the partnership model has been very good for us. Um, it may not, may or may not be the answer for every state, but for North Carolina, I believe it's been a very good run thus far. You touched on upon it, a lot of points. Now, Eduardo, I want to sort of pull on the string of, of uh, resource development. There's a churn, and and how do you how do you sort of pull this economic development with all of the the changes that are taking place within? Just the workforce, workforce to development, coming and going, and, and how, how do you manage that? Well, certainly it's challenging because, like you said, it's, it's constantly moving, it's, it's constantly changing. Uh, but part of that is it's organization like the one that I work for, we try to coordinate those efforts, like making sure that everyone understands you know, what type of industries are coming into the region, what type of jobs are going to be needed in the next five or ten years. Working with those universities, like I said, uh, so they can build the programs that they need, so uh, the companies can right, have right, the right. pipeline that they, they will need eventually. So in that case, you're, you're working with uh, uh, just education to say, hey, we're working to get these type, this type of business into our states and, and we'll need this type of workforce. So let's work with you, universities, college, te uh, technical colleges, and be able to create that workforce of that can satisfy that demand. Because that's a big part of what you guys do. Because it's one thing to say, come on over, come on over business. But then if you don't have the workforce to, well, help them. It, it's got you really hit on the head there. A hundred percent, very much though. A very different outreach. Maybe four or five years ago, doing economic development, you'd go out there and you'd you'd sell the the taxes, you'd sell yeah. the incentive proposals. Yeah. Now it's, do you have people? What is the quality of life? Yeah. Will I be able to attract people to the future? Um, yes. So if you you saw our booth earlier, yeah. in the back of our booth, how much industry do you see? You saw rivers, you saw donuts. I oh, mean, yeah. you saw a, no, it's I, quality of life. It's a little bit interesting. It, it yeah, was. Please. It was funny because I'm, I'm trying to, I'm putting it together. I'm going, oh, there's a, there's a donut. <laughs> yeah, what, yep. What are they attracting? This is the best place for donut manufacturing? Oh, uh, uh, it's got, you know the answer to that, right? Uh, it, it's yes. Oh, of course, the home of Krispy Kreme. It is? Is yes, it really? Yeah. What's this in North Carolina? That. Yes. So, uh, yeah, that, in reference to go. the picture. There you go. Yeah, that, that, that workforce. Was. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It bring in people. And no, no, no. It was uh, we, we saw a, 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 an old Krispy Kreme sign. It was like that retro. It was okay. big, and it was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Okay. Yep. 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 I digress. <laughs> I digress. So, how do you do that, Eduardo? How do we how do we ensure you're 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 buzzing around and and how do you just ensure that these businesses feel comfortable knowing that we're going to the right place to be successful we have that great partnership and and i know that that we're, we're stepping forward with our best football how do we do that yes yeah, so i think it's a lot of uh, collaboration making sure that all the partners are in sync you know they know what is coming um, getting them on the table early in that conversation mm -hmm. So that everyone kind of speak the same language, and you know, and when companies come into market, helping them making you know the setting up meetings with the technical colleges or with other employers that are already there that can tell the story and say, hey, we are already in Charlotte, we are in this region, we have been here for this long. Let uh, you know, they, they, what better than having the another company speak their own story about how they have been successful and how maybe another one can do the same. 
you know, and just help grow that ecosystem that is already in place. So let me put my hat on, and and I, I again, technology blistering. The pace is absolutely blistering. So whatever I know today, tomorrow, I'm sure I'm on version 27, and I'm still sort of evaluating version one. So that's a reality of the marketplace, too. Then there's certain interesting economic challenges out there that are not just impact, and it's like, hey, I'm manufacturing whatever the product is, that we are so inter, I mean, it's just interrelated, and every part is so important. What do you see in this sort of, put that future hat, and this is it's going to you, uh, Nathaniel. Mm. What do you see? How do, how do companies sort of deal with the a volatility that I, I think I see out there? And what I hear, let's put it that way. I, I God bless those people that are dealing with supply chain and, and sourcing and all of the other stuff that's associated with just fulfilling. Uh, well, I mean, in, in reference to supply chain, I mean, I think that's really something that sort of hit everyone by surprise. <laughs> Um, whereas uh, with a two by four, oh, uh, very much so. And then a gut it, punch. And if you noticed, I mean, not in reference to North Carolina, just up and down the East Coast, I think everyone sat back and like, oh, wait a minute, look what happened to Los Angeles. Maybe we need to do something about our ports too. Yeah. So, I, so, so Charleston's dredging their port, North Carolina's dredging their port as well. I mean, there's a lot of money. Oh, being oh, 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 oh. you yeah. said dredging. Yeah. Yeah, they're cleaning it out. They're getting they're greater getting drafts. Yeah. So, so they um, can bring in better. Well, larger vessels or whatever. Exactly, ah. exactly. And so, for example, certain ports, and I, I mean, I don't want to bash anyone here, but certain ports now only, there's only maybe during high tide you can come in. You turn around and you come out. So when it's low tide, that you're not accessible. And so it really limits your ability there. So it's like, well, you know, if we, we dredge this a couple more feet, we can bring in those post Panama ships. Um, we can get a full 24 hour service. That, that really expands the operations and capability in companies now they're looking for that. I like it. I you think, yeah. Yeah, they are. Very much so. A, a lot's going into the railroads, a lot's going into the actual, I will say, the road and transportation infrastructure as well. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. very much so. Have you had, Eduardo, conversations about more uh, reshoring, onshoring, near shoring, whatever shoring, to bring uh, critical manufacturers back? Okay, I can manufacture, I've got a portfolio of manufacturing capabilities. I can keep that manufacturing process down there, but I need I need these critical ones. Have you mm. been having those conversations? Yes, yes, we have. And I think with uh, the pandemic, it now it's becoming even more important. Oh, and you know, like Nathaniel was saying, with all the supply chain issues, uh, companies are saying, well, we cannot keep our operations on the other side of the world when you know people need things like yeah. now and quick. So we are starting to get more of those uh, conversations with companies the same hey, I think it's maybe the time to get closer to where our consumers are. You know, the, the U.S. is where they sell most of their products. Yeah. Well, it, you know, with COVID, it clearly shows some of the weaknesses that the supply chain has. Uh, so we're starting to have a lot of those conversations. There is a lot of uh, interest from international companies too, from like Eastern Europe, like they're looking at the U.S. too as another place to set up some local operations. Uh, oh. Because again, you know, they want to make sure they're closer to where they are selling the products. So, with your organization, let's say I'm, I'm a manufacturer, and I got it, and I can I can just go knocking on the door and saying, "Hey, this is what I'm thinking," and and the skill sets, the the ability to be able to collaborate and say get answers to to get some insights, at least begin that journey. I could I could definitely reach out to you guys and, and be able to do that, right? Oh, uh, uh, of course, and please do. Yes. <laughs> so, so what do you guys do to sort of help get that message out, Nathaniel? What do you do? Oh, I mean, it's stuff like we're, we're here today, and we have our booth set up. You're on the Industrial Talk podcast, which it, happens to yep. be the number one. This is not. This is all yes. backed up by data. Number one industrial-related podcast in the universe. It's bigger than the galaxy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Wow. It, it, it's an honor to be here. Yes. yes. So, I mean. Right and, and so to answer your question, this is probably it. I mean, we're going to it use is, this podcast, right? yeah, I mean, and then just, we know what. You don't. You will not know yeah. what's going to hit and you. And we'll have to beat them with this. <laughs> That's right. Hey, yeah. stop it! Yeah, no. I get, I, but to answer your question, I mean, at states use a variety of different. I mean, we do we do the missions. Obviously, we try to um, for certain. We'll say Pacific industries. We try to get officials involved. Um, obviously, we try to make. Um, other companies aware 
are other oral associations aware of maybe certain industrial benefits of a particular region um, as opposed to other regions? A lot of it's just making putting that information out there um, and letting people know there's really no hindrance or negative to reaching out to a state economic developer and say, hey, listen, what would it look like if we did a facility there? A lot of states have a building or have programs that deal with existing buildings, um, have, have programs that are dealing with new greenfield projects. Hey, listen, it just so happens we have this facility here. We can back it up with a certain level of support financially. We have certain trading programs from the local community college. And just to explore those options. I mean, there's no, no hands are being tied and nothing's being signed, but just to know, hey, listen, these are my growth options in the future. And this is maybe how state A or region A can support me as opposed to region B. See, I love that. Eduardo, I, I like the fact that I can come over and approach you and, and just have that conversation. I'm, I'm, I'm a big advocate of just constantly trying to educate. I, I don't have the answers. It's moving fast. I sense it out there. So it's really important to be able to at least know that I can go to you and it's like, hey, hey, I'm thinking about this and be able to have that sort of insights and guidance. I, 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 don't, I don't see anything wrong. Any pushback on that? Oh, no, not at all. That's what we are here for. You know, uh, the, I specifically, I represent the Charlotte region, but the, even you know, the North Carolina state. Uh, many people don't really know the great assets that the state has and the region has, and that's our, our job, is to help people realize that there is an opportunity here, that they may not be part of what they have been thinking wow. about, because, you know, usually people, yeah. you know, there are other markets that are well known in the U.S. that, even, especially if you're thinking, uh, people outside of the U.S., what they know of is Chicago, New York, Chicago, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, the, the big markets. Barstow, California. Yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> Nobody knows about that. No, no. But, uh, but the, the Carolinas, they don't necessarily know about it. Uh, so it's just educating them about it. So once they know about the, the, what we have over here, you can tell when they first come to, to the Charlotte region, it's like, wow, I didn't realize that you have the fifth business airport of the world it's over here yeah and all of a so sudden i'm getting uh, i have a layover in charlotte I'm like what oh what, yeah when yes. did that happen uh it's where, it's where your, I? you're flying american i see no no that's uh, that's really interesting now nathaniel is yes. there are, are there any industries what 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 is that general focus you, you know just, do you say everybody come on here come on to north carolina or are there really sort of focused it, industry. Yeah, and to be honest, and that's why it's a good idea to reach out to the economic developers. Hey, listen, this is this is yeah. my industry. Is this a good fit? Um, obviously, as a state income developer, I have to say every industry is a good fit in North Carolina. That's right. In reality, maybe off the podcast, we'd have a more honest conversation. But, yeah. you know, I mean, I mean, obviously, there's certain areas in North Carolina um, we tend to, or say on a regional basis, um, tend to handle a little bit better. Um, the Southeast region, for example, tends to have a much higher percentage of GDP comes from traditional manufacturing. Um, in North Carolina, that dates back to your traditional furniture, textile havens. And, why, and even now, which is sort of, we'll say, transferred or evolved into biomanufacturing, um, a lot of metal fabrication, other manufacturers in the area. And so in just looking at, okay, well, we have these industries, what programs does North Carolina, what resources is the state yeah. government is putting to these industries? So in North Carolina, as a region, you'd find all right, well, what we have? We have large military bases, Fort Bragg, large military base, arguably in the world. About 20,000 kids leaving the bases every year. I say kids, they maybe average 28, 29. Right, 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 right. Discipline trained. Why don't we put some resources into programs to connect these people leaving the bases to manufacturers local? A good percentage of them want to stay local anyways. They're skilled, they're disciplined. This is a great workforce to tap onto. So we can do that. So each state in the region is going to have their own strength. It may be tech, it may be general manufacturing, metal fabrication, but I mean, you can speak to state developers and say, these are the programs you have, we have on base, this is what you can tap into, even if you're here or you're thinking about being here, um, and this is where we can maybe improve your stay, our business in that yeah. particular region. No, I, I really like that. I like that uh, because if I was a business, I, I would definitely make sure that wherever I go, I, I know that there's that that resource that would be my driver it's just oh, skilled yeah. resources i got it I, there's a building yeah you, you've got all of the main you know transportation it's, stuff i got it but it's, it's so like, important now it is it's just oh, everything 100 uh, yeah. very much so the livecast just published um they do the what do they call it the uh workforce talent scorecard i believe every year of, of which states it just basically net 
population gain, net population loss. Um, you could probably guess the states with the highest net population gain. Yeah, your Florida up there, of course, yeah. your Texas, Arizona, yeah. and stuff, and, and then and North, North Carolina. Carolina. Uh, yeah, of course. Or else I wouldn't bring well, it up. I was right? just yeah, going to say, and I wish that, North Carolina was up yeah, there. But the, the point <laughs> of that, the, your, your five, six, seven on that right. list, you have Tennessee, you have right. South Carolina, you have Georgia, just that manufacturing haven. So what we're seeing right now is you look at the the other con- other states, on the other end of the spectrums, your New York, your California stuff, we're seeing a lot of that traditional manufacturing leaving from there not necessarily going to north carolina and please shop around but i mean going to texas um going to florida going to georgia going to tennessee south carolina etc it tends to be those areas um that have those Uh, programs more structured to manufacturers i like it i do as we close out give me a parting shot what make make your case of coming to uh north carolina Come on, Eduardo. Do it. No, no, no. Right, yeah. And then right. you're next, Nathaniel. Yep. You can't you can't plagiarize what he said. Yep. Oh, please. Well, I would say that it's a, a great place to, to do business. There is a, a really, a, I would say a big pool, but there is a, a workforce that is available. Many, like Nathaniel just said, there's many people moving into the state every time. Just to the Charlotte region, 84 people a day are moving to Charlotte. And the average age of those people are 31 years. So if you can see that, you know, that's a, a good source of, uh, uh-huh. where people can tap in. And with that too is North Carolina also provides the right lifestyle for those people who are moving in. Yeah. We have mountains, we have the, the beach, we have the cities, you know, you name it. There's really good quality of life. You have craft which is, beers. Yeah, we got craft yeah, beers yeah, still. Yeah, You've been to do. Asheville, I see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. <nice. laughs> So, you know, when you put all that together, what better place to be and have, you know, grow your business? All right, Nathaniel. That's, uh, again, he did a great job. Uh, That's a phenomenal job. Yeah, I was just going to say, you you can add to it if you want. Um, Yeah, I I would say the, um, uh, so the great Scott McKenzie recently visited a great (laughs) state and shared about it. What state was that? Raleigh. Uh, That was North Carolina. Exactly. Well, it was for another conference. No, wait. uh, uh, which is fine. Yeah. Which is fine. We have some good conferences in North Carolina as you well. You do. I, I, I had a great... I, I, yeah, there's a good quality of life. Now, I'd probably bring down the age, average age, or up the age. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would. I'm not 31. 35. There you go. There you go. There you go. We're all, all 35. Right. How, do, how do people get a hold of you, Nathaniel? Oh, please. Uh, email me or you just edpnc.com. Very simple. edpnc.com. Well, there it is, man. Eduardo. Yeah, same thing. Charlotteregion.com. You can find our information right there. Charlotteregion.com. There it is. Thank Eduardo. You. Nathaniel. Thank all you, right. Scott. We're going to have all the contact information out on Industrial Talk, so fear not. you you, you got to get a hold of these. If you're going to North Carolina, uh, they recommend. It is a yes. cool <laughs> state, no doubt about it. You reach out to these. This would be probably the first step in that prog- uh, process. So reach out to them Great. out at industrialtalk.com. Once again, we're broadcasting from Fabtech. It is Atlanta, Georgia. It is a buzz, a buzz, a buzz, and it's exciting. A lot of people like these gents yep. solving problems, making life better. So we're going to wrap it up on the other side. So stay tuned. We will be right back. You're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast Network. How about that for a conversation? As we wrap up, that was Fabtech. We were talking to both Nathaniel as well as Eduardo. Economic development, you need to reach out to them. You'll have all the contact information out on Industrial Talk. Just find there, you know, the conversation from Fabtech. Did I say Fabtech a couple of times? Yes, Fabtech. And, uh, you know, they're pretty active out on LinkedIn. They got mad stat cards. And uh, my recommendation, you're looking to move, you're looking to find a place for business, you have to connect with these two gents and make sure that you get all the information about the area. I gotta tell you, great barbecue, no doubt about it. All right, Fabtech, gotta put that on your calendar. Great, great location, great uh, opportunity to see real companies solving problems, helping to provide solutions so that you're a success. All there, it was massive, so put that on your calendar. We're gonna have another great conversation as we wrap up. From Fabtech shortly, so stay tuned. We will be.